What's going on, 22 here, and you are now watching Comic Book Addicts with S Vaughn82. What's your fix? What's up, y'all? Welcome to Comic Book Addicts. This is episode 62. Um, hope everybody's having a good day so far. It's Monday, April 8th. It's Eclipse Day. Eclipse Day. Um, were you guys able to see the eclipse where you're at? Let me know in the comments. Um, we weren't able to see it in Chattanooga. Uh, it was cloudy here. We weren't on the on the path anyways, uh, so we wouldn't be able to see it that well here no matter what, but it was really cloudy here today anyways. Um, so I did walk outside at work. I was towards the end of my work day, and I walked outside to check it out, and uh, I got to see it a little bit, but uh, it wasn't it wasn't anything too crazy here in Tennessee. Uh, but hope you guys are having a great day. Um, Monday also means the Monday night lineup. We got a lot of awesome live streams this evening and uh, start it off kicked off with Izzy and his comic book weekly pull list. Uh, he starts he does that every week at 630 p.m. Eastern time over at Izzy verse NYC if you've never checked that out. Um, but we got a bunch of really cool live streams going on tonight. Um, after this, we got Between the Lines. They have special guest David Nakayama. So that's an amazing special guest. Uh, Y'all be sure to head on over to Geek Out with Roscoe's channel after this is over. Um, we got my man 22, my southern brother. He's got his top 10 alternatives going on at 9 p.m. Eastern time this evening. And uh, that's one of my favorite comic book live streams. I love watching and seeing which... Um, what alternatives he comes up with to the week in comics. It's always a great live stream and a fun hangout. And then we got Cupo comics at 10 PM Eastern time um, with his Monday night raw books. And that's always a fun time as well. Wheels are really cool, dude. If you never check that out, be sure to check that out at uh, 10 PM Eastern time, Monday night lineup. we got a whole evening full of awesome comic book related live streams. So I hope that you will come and hang out with us. Uh, it's kind of been a, a rough week. Um, we had a couple of losses in the comic book community, obviously. And I don't want to dive too deep in that. Um, Cause like I, like I said, it is, it is really sad. Um, but I did want to uh, talk about it briefly for a second. We, a week ago today, we lost Ed Pisker and um, an artist that I have a tremendous amount of respect for. And, um, me and Ed were actually the same age, so it kind of hit me in a in a a really hard way. Um, it sucks. It just sucks. The whole situation sucks, and that's all I'm gonna say. Um, but we lost Ed Pisker a week ago today, and it was just really tough and really sad. And uh, more sad news: we um, Scott Blair, artist Scott Blair, amazing artist Scott Blair, um, lost his battle with cancer. Um, I think it was yesterday, and. Um, really really sad i hate i hated to hear that because um i love scott blair's artwork he was so talented and um just such a cool person and um i i don't know i, I don't know what to say i just really loved his art and i hate to see um i don't know cancer cancer sucks but two great losses in the in in one week and it sucks and um i hate it but I wanted to talk about that for a minute because uh, I don't know, man. It's just that's it's rough two in one week, but uh, I don't know. Anyways, moving on to uh, better stuff. We got, uh, like I said, David Nakayama is going to be on between the lines after this. So be sure to head out, head over to Geek Out with Roscoe's channel after this is over. And we got an awesome guest this evening. Um, we got Ryan, the Colossus Collector. Um, I've always wanted to talk to him about Colossus and, and find out why uh, that's his favorite character character or one of his favorite characters. Um, but anyways, we got him hanging out with us this evening and it's going to be awesome. Uh, but first, I wanted to throw up something. I do this thing where um, on my channel on YouTube every week, I'll throw up a couple of polls and I'll ask people um, different questions related to comic books. Um, usually I'll throw up a couple of covers, like four covers that I thought were my favorites and ask, uh, which, what you, what you guys picked and see what you picked. And, uh, this week I did a couple of different polls and I thought that I would make a little skit out of it before I, before I bring out the guest. Um, I'm going to call this YouTube polls. 
Uh, but anyways, I did two polls this week. Okay. And the first poll had to do with covers. And um, what I asked everyone was another new comic book day, another week of really cool cover art. Which would you pick for best cover out of these? And I threw up these four covers. The first one being Red Sonia issue one. And it was a uh, John Tyler, Christopher negative space cover. Really cool negative space cover. And the second one was Deadpool issue one. And it was an awesome in Hyuk Lee foil cover. And the third one was Birds of Prey issue one, or no, issue eight. And uh, it was a Derek Chu cover. And the last one was Immortal Thor issue nine. And it was the cover A, Alex Ross. And um, so as you can see, out of that, we had 24, vo 24 votes. And Immortal Thor ended up winning that. So Immortal Thor got cover of the week, which that was a beautiful cover. That was one of, that's been my favorite cover that Alex Ross has done so far. Um, in that run but the second poll that we did uh was related to ghost machine so um and the the question was out of these titles from ghost machine which was your favorite okay because I, I just wanted to i just wanted to find out what everybody thought about the three titles um out of the three what was everybody's favorites and i think there was 22 votes on this and out of the 22 votes um i put up red coat geiger issue one rook exodus and then i threw up because there was a fourth option i threw up there uh no ghost machine for me derp just as a funny uh fourth option and of course everybody picked the the funny fourth option but out of the votes for the actual comics rook exodus issue one won that so uh pretty cool stuff uh but anyways enough with all that let's bring out the guests we got a really cool guest this evening and Actually, I should probably shout out the chat first, right? Sorry about that, guys. Let's see who we got in the chat. Sorry, I got distracted for a second. I had somebody go in the room and it distracted me. Las Cruces, he said, good morning and hooray. Can't bring out the guest yet. I got to say what's up to the chat. Um, Las Cruces popped in. He said, hooray. What's up, Las Cruces? Always first in the chat. Thanks for coming out, man. We got Brian LCS saying hello from Sutton from South Carolina, I almost said Southern California. Um, but what's up, Brian? Uh, Las Cruces also says woohoo and hello from New Mexico. We got Colossus Collector who I was about to bring out. Um, and then I realized I, I didn't shout out the chat. So um, he says, what's going on comic friends? We're about to bring him out and uh, find out what got him into comic books. I can't wait to talk to him. Uh, we got my comic pop saying, hey, Scotty, hello chat. My comic pops, Lorenzo, over at Indie Comics and Reviews. He also says, cloudy and rainy here in Washington. So you didn't get to see the eclipse that well. That sucks. I didn't get to see it that well either. It was pretty cloudy here. I guess it was cloudy everywhere from what I hear. We got Marcus, my comic bro. Circumstances, he says, what up, homies? Let's see, skimming down through here. Kenneth Bird, he says, hi to everyone here tonight. What's going on, Kenneth? Thanks for coming out, man. We got Dope Comics. He says, hey, guys. What's up, Dope? Thanks for coming out, bro. Uh, but anyways, let's bring out the guests. Back to bringing the guests out. My guest tonight is a comic book collector and a com a content creator from north of the border in Canada. And um, super funny guy as well, if you've ever seen his com content. But y'all help me welcome two comic book addicts for the first time. Ryan, the Colossus Collector. What's up, man? What's up, man? Thanks for having me on. Ah, uh, dude. Glad to have you here, man. Glad to have you here. Uh, I totally messed up the, uh, I almost didn't shout out the chat once again. I do, yeah, that all the time, yeah. I do that all the time. That's like the second time in three weeks that I'm like almost just breezed right past it. But anyways, dude, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. Doing good. Another, good. another work day, but uh, happy to be home and happy to uh to be talking comics awesome it was a work day for me as well um were you able to check out the eclipse where you were at yeah so uh much like you were talking in chat uh i uh i um went up to the rooftop of the building i was in and um it was it was cloudy unfortunately um i think a couple people might have saw just the the beginnings of of it um, yeah. and I should mention like, I'm, I'm, I'm in Toronto, Toronto or I'm just outside Toronto, but I was working in Toronto today 
and oh, okay. uh, we're, we're directly in the path of um of the the main eclipse i guess if you looked at the eclipse maps or whatever uh yeah. so we would have got we would have got a, a a real great uh, show but the clouds were clouds were there so it got really dark and ominous um for a, a few minutes there but um that was about it so it did get really dark where you were though it got like nighttime dark like m maybe not like pitch black middle of the night dark but like yeah. like sun has set it's nighttime now dark <laughs> nice yeah. that's cool well uh Pretty tell awesome. us some, you said you're from um what wait what west of toronto is what you said 40 45 yeah, minutes from kinda, buffalo with what you were telling me correct yeah i'm kind of like halfway between toronto and uh buffalo um awesome. yeah That's but really in cool, ontario man. in canada yeah well uh what got you obviously i have you here to talk about comics uh that's what we do um what got you into comics man did you get into comics was it one of those things where um you picked them up as a kid or was it something that you um got into later or or both i mean like how did you get into comics at what point did you get into the, uh, the hobby yeah so um i'm a, i'm a lifelong marvel fan uh, awesome. but i didn't really get like hardcore collecting comics until just a couple years ago um yeah. but when i was a kid uh like a lot of people in my age range uh, i got into it through cartoons and video games first of all marvel uh yeah. so x-men animated series was huge for me spider-man animated series was was huge for me um and then uh one of the big things that made me a a colossus and x-men fan outside of the cartoon was uh the konami um arcade x-men arcade game oh that where, was awesome i used to yeah, play that yeah, yeah. And I was always Colossus as uh, as my as my character, and I just thought he was the coolest character. I I gravitated towards like kind of beast, huge, strong kind of heroes and stuff. So, uh, and then his like special power in that game that's not in anything else comic wise uh, yeah. is really really good, cool. So uh, that's kind of where where it started. And okay. then, uh, cool. yeah, and and I, but I had a few comics here and there, and I collected some some Marvel cards, um, you know, in my younger years. And then I got into comics, sort of, for a little bit, of, a little while when I was a little bit older, just before high school. Uh, so I I have a, like a small collection from that time as well. That's pretty cool. I loved comic cards, man. I, I was super into comic cards as a kid. That was like my favorite thing. Yeah, I had uh, I had the whole collection of ninety four. Well, I still do um, of ninety four Ma Marvel masterpieces. Oh yeah, those were awesome. Yeah. And then I uh, <laughs> a couple of years ago, actually, before I got into comics, I got the stupid idea that I could uh, get them graded and then and then sell them. Yeah. Um. So I got them all graded, or well, not all of them, like a. a like 90 of them graded oh, and they geez. came back absolutely trash grades oh, crap. before i knew anything about really grading or anything and uh i did a whole video on it if, if anybody wants to go in depth on the story um but uh yeah so now i just have all these slabbed cards but i don't want to get rid of them now because they're they are a little bit more nostalgic especially now that i've collected comics uh, as much as I do now. So, yeah. Of course, man. Well, uh, what was the, what, do you remember the first, uh, comic book series that you, that you ever got into? I could show you my very first comic ever. I have it literally right here. Really? Um, yeah, man. Let's see it. This. What that awesome dude. That's a cool McFarlane cover. I have that yeah. somewhere. Yeah, so this is this was actually um, this was exclusively released in Canada, but I think a lot of copies or or it did get released in U the U.S. after because I think a lot mm -hmm. of American collectors have like come across this, but yeah. this was a Canadian series that Marvel did it was sort of like an anti-drug you know like 
public service kind of uh, keep kids clean. Yeah, mini series. And yep. uh, but what's cool about this one uh, is the Mc- McFarlane cover. Um, yeah, awesome. all the the rest of the books are uh, they're not they're not McFarlane's um, books, but uh, this this one is. So it's yeah, I got the... this. I think I got this free through school or something. And oh, uh, cool. yeah, this was like my first comic book ever. That's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool first comic book. Yeah. And I, and I've kept it, which is, which is great too, especially since like, you know, I wasn't like a hardcore comic collector as a kid, but I just always, yeah. I've always kind of kept little things like that. And so I'm happy that I, I held on to that. Dude, my, my comics from when I was a kid are so far gone. I don't even know. I guess my mom gave them away. She must've given them away when I was probably, I don't know, middle school or something like that. So they, they've been gone for a long time. I, I think that's a story. A lot of people <laughs> have, you know, oh, mom, man. mom or dad. Yeah, got dude, the I, there's so, the cards, you know, all that sort of thing. Dude, the comic cards, the toys. I had so, so many cool toys that, that probably just got thrown in a dumpster somewhere. Me too. You know what I did with toys, which was so dumb, uh, was when I got to being a little bit older and kind of grew, grew out of out of action figures and stuff. I sold them in garage sales to just like have money to go to Seven Eleven or you know hang mm. out with friends. You know, like uh, I did a little bit of that, change, too. right? You know, I did some like, of that too. Yeah, I, I sold off a lot of consoles to uh party with my friends and stuff like that. I, that so that I kept actually. I kept all really? my video game stuff. I lost games, but I, I kept the consoles. Like I have I still have my X-Men or uh, my Sega Genesis and my N64. Oh, wow. Um but uh I maybe I sold some games along the way, but a few I, I, I kept a few, but uh I definitely don't have everything I used to have. So as far as like collecting as far as comic book collecting, what 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 are you currently collecting right now? Are you do you collect any runs or or do you have like a list of keys that you're trying to knock out? How are you collecting right at this moment? Yeah, so um, I'm like I said, a Marvel guy. So I'm awesome. I'm, I'm I would say I'm definitely a big key collector, um, with a high focus on X Men. Um, awesome. So I'm I'm. And I'm going after some runs, so I'm going after the Claremont. Well, I'm sorry, I'm going after X Men one to three hundred, uh, which oh, a big man. chunk of that is the Claremont run. And I've actually fin- I or I have the Claremont run. It's it's done, um, man, and it, the, the Silver Age is what I'm I'm uh, trying to build up to. I think I'm like twenty something books away from the full run. Wow, yeah, that's amazing. That's really cool. Yeah, it's great. I um. And then I'm kind of in the process now looking out to upgrade some of those Claremont books because at first it was just like fill the run, but now I'm sort of sort of trying to upgrade them as I go as yeah. well. Um, and then I also collect, I'm c- collecting a, a, an Adam Warlock run, basically like his, all his key issues, this start and then into, he had a couple like very short, self-titled series in the mm-hmm. 70s 80s um, yeah they were really cool they yeah were cool. So it he his his books kind of jump around it's weird like he he started in fantastic four then he was in thor then he had like um he had the marvel premiere number one which was his first self-titled book but then he hopped into like strange tales then he has his own run and he's so he's like kind of all over the place this it's an interesting run to collect um, and then I'm also collecting Submariner, um, cool. basically from Submariner one, the big premiere issue, uh, mm-hmm. and that, that whole run, which goes to like 70 or something like that. Man, that's really cool. That's, and those are some cool characters too. Oh, and Alpha Flight, since I'm Canadian, I'm collecting the Al- the original Alpha Flight run as well. That is a run that I have debated collecting myself. I have a bunch of issues. I have like all the key issues, honestly, um, uh, all I would all I would need is just the filler, the stuff in between. Um, but that's a run I've debated collecting. That's a, that's an awesome an awesome run to collect yeah. and a cool run to read as well. And uh, yeah, that's that's really cool. Yeah. So, uh, but it's a, it's a 
it's a growing collection. I've I've slowed down. Last year I was buying like ham. Uh, this year I've slowed down considerably, and uh, it's also because I'm I'm going for an X Men one, so I'm trying oh, to like nice. I'm trying to really like curb my spending and uh, save up for that, and yeah, so. So is that your, is that your goal right now? Is just saving up for an X Men one? Yeah, it's kind of my cool. one major big goal for the year, but I don't know if I'm gonna get there this year or not. We'll see. Yeah, but that's the goal. That's an awesome goal, man. I I hope that I have that book in my collection one day. I don't know if I ever will, but that's a big book. That's a that's a really cool book. I hope yeah, you get I, it, dude. I hope you I, get it. Thank you. I I I totally get when when someone says you know it's i don't know if i could get it or it's that one's not one, one i'm gonna ever get ultimately it comes down to you know priorities of course you gotta make sure that you know you you can live and your family's good and everything but like yeah. i think i think if you want it you can you can get there just through getting books and kind of just being smart about like selling you know selling books that you get cheaper and just kind of working your way there. You know, there's no time limit on it. Right. Just get there when you can. Right. That's true. Yeah, that's true. You can always save a little bit at a time. And like, I've gotten big books through like trading and stuff too. Like I've traded yeah. a bunch of smaller stuff towards big yeah. issues before. I just yeah. like to, like when someone says, I don't think I could do it. I just, say, oh, you know, it's up to you. But like I think you can do it if you want to, if you want to go and do it, right? You just gotta. Yeah. Find I mean, and that's a great that's a great way to look at it too. I mean, yeah, dude. I'll yeah, like I just feel I I I, I it, it's kind of a little bit sad when someone says, "Oh, I can never have that book." I just hope you know you you can one day you know just <laughs> sell, sell sell some books you have work you know, work your way up, that sort of thing. But I understand like for, for, for some, it's, it's just not the priority. Right. And that's True. fine too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what is it, what is it about this hobby? What are some of the things about this hobby that uh, you enjoy? Like what is, what are some of your favorite things about collecting? Oh man. I love so much about it. Um, I think the community is the best part of it. Um, just the people you meet, if you engage with with the uh, people either on Instagram or YouTube or whatever, mm -hmm. like I've made so many really good friends in the last couple years, um, and just enjoying seeing their like other people's journey along with your own is yeah. a lot of fun, it and cool. it's super supportive and positive a lot of the time. Obviously, like anything, there's negative stuff too, but uh, you know it's it's. I feel like the when you put out a lot of positive, that's what you get back for the most part. So I definitely love that. Uh, and I love the chase. I love I love the art. I don't know. It just goes on. <laughs> I love yeah. I love so much of it. Well, have you ever have you? OK. How long would you consider yourself being like a, a serious comic book collector now? Like, how long would you say you've collected? serious like two years i'm like i'm yes. i just hit, i hit my two-year mark a, okay a couple in that ago. time what's the biggest mistake that you think you've ever made with with collecting uh biggest mistake would be um probably just in the early early months the the very start of it i definitely got into like some of the hype i got on whatnot and you know, crazy. You went just, to town. You just get, you start buying books. And like, why am I buying this stuff? Right. Like, um, <laughs> and like spending a little bit too much, you know, like that, that's kind of where I have, have a little bit of regret, but I also look at it as like, it was a learning experience and it's just part of getting into it. Right. Um, sure. and you know, yeah, I have a, a bunch of books that, maybe i don't know what to do with that i don't really want i'll find a way to i'll find a way to move it move it on somehow yeah. uh or i'll just hold on to it and you know throw it in as giveaways or filler like there's always going to be a purpose for something right so That's true. um i just I chalk just it up as learning right 
Yeah, of course, of course. I was just wondering if, if along that time you had ever made any real, really bad mistakes like I have because uh, I made the mistake of the first year I was back collecting. I didn't really have an appreciation for Golden Age stuff. Mm -hmm. And the first year that I was collecting, I was finding like some crazy, crazy Golden Age stuff. And I didn't know what I had at the time. And mm -hmm. um, I didn't appreciate it also at the same time. And my logic at that time was uh, it, it probably belonged with somebody else that would appreciate it more. So like I was trading it off for like modern age slabs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I made the mistake of trading off two uh, really, really nice golden age, uh, like pre EC horror books that I really wish I had. And I, yeah. I still kick myself to this day. Um but that was like a big mistake that I made that I, I learned from. I learned from it, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I just like to hear if if, uh, if anybody else has ever dorked it as big as I had, <laughs> I guess. Uh, I mean, I'm sure I'm sure there are those who have had experiences like that, if not worse. But I, I've been pretty fortunate. Like um I yeah, I haven't made any 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 real errors uh in terms of selling something that was super valuable that I didn't realize or anything like that. I would just say more so me overpaying for books. Like I, I'll say like I, I bought my um, X-Men four first Omega red nine, eight. I bought mm -hmm. that in my first year collecting and granted prices were higher than, but like, I I paid a way too much for that book, and now I like I look back on that book, and it's like could probably find one somewhere in a box for not a lot, and hit a nine eight. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> you know, I think I did the same thing with that. I I I paid too much for a nine six of that book. I, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I made the same mistake with that book. Uh, you said before that you. You had graded a lot of cards. Do you do a lot of grading when it comes to comic books? Yeah, so um, I've done <laughs> I've done several submissions um, last year. So yeah, uh, yeah like I've, I've done like three submissions. They're all pretty sizable. My first one was like huge. Actually, no, I've done. Sorry, I've done four submissions now. Um, two of them were like twenty, the twenty book max or whatever. Oh damn! Um, yeah, and then wow. and then a couple more uh, towards the end of last year. So yeah, I've I've, I've done a, a number of grading uh, submissions. Who's your preferred grading service? Do you go with uh, CGC? CGC, yeah. yeah. Um, and it was before all the stuff lately. That's I have not done anything since then. Um, not that I really have like a big. Like I'm not, I'm not one one who's like poisoned on CGC after all this stuff that's happened. It's more yeah. so been because I'm I'm just not buying and I'm trying to like hold back um, how much so I spend. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, CGC. I I mean, it just makes sense. Like, I think uh, I think there's qualities to CBCS, but um, it's uh, it's just not what holds the value and what people want so if i ever want to move on from a book you know it just makes it harder to move or just not not as lucrative so it doesn't make mm -hmm. sense to to go with them i'm um, yeah. i actually have been working on speaking of grading i am doing this project i just haven't done the last leg of it um where i want to compare all four grading companies pgx egs uh, CBCS and, and CGC. So I actually mm -hmm. submitted one book, uh, the same book to the first three. Okay. So I got it, got it back, cracked it, repressed it, sent it to the next one. And so the last one's going to CGC. And then I'm going to do a video that like compares all the, all the experiences. Cool. And yeah, that's I've, really seen, cool. I've seen comparison videos, but I've never seen someone do it quite like that. And uh, uh -oh. then I can compare like the book and and like like how they graded it and stuff like that too. So that uh, is actually gonna—that's a really good idea, dude. I like that. 
That's gonna be Thanks, fun. Man. I've just been uh, sitting sitting on the the last the last submission, but uh, hopefully I'll get that out sooner or later. That's really cool. And and, and talking about your channel, um, what what made you want to start the channel, uh, Colossus Collector, on YouTube? What got you started on, on YouTube? Yeah. So um, after my first year in the hobby, um, I was on IG and I was kind of just doing a lot of stuff on IG and I had a lot of fun, but, yeah. um, I, uh, and I, I mean, I had been watching YouTube a lot of seeing like streams and people getting together and I just thought it would be cool to jump on YouTube, try and like expand the, the community mm -hmm. to me. And, um, uh, and just another outlet to share what I'm doing and, you know, just have fun with it. I, I, I'm, I'm a creative person. So, uh, you're funny so as hell like, too. You, you make some funny uh, skits and you. stuff. Yeah, dude. You're hilarious. I've been trying to up the, up the entertainment value. <laughs> yeah, it, it, um, it definitely works, man. You got me cracking up when I was going through your stuff, checking it out earlier, just kind of reminding myself of your refreshing myself of your content, uh, it was, I was cracking up, dude. There was I some funny stuff. That. Yeah. Um, well, I actually, I work in advertising. Uh, like, I wow. And stuff. Very so, cool. yeah, it's just kind of in my wheelhouse. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so I, it, I, I just thought it would be fun to do. And like, I guess, I guess sometimes with in the back of everybody's mind when they start a YouTube channel is like, what if this actually goes really well? And like, <laughs> maybe you make some money off of it i don't think that was ever like a legit um expectation but i mean i guess it's always a possibility in the back of your mind of um it at the very least maybe it helps you buy a few extra comic books and i hasn't gotten to that point for me uh yet but who knows maybe maybe knows, one day I'll, I'll i'll put like i'll i'll make a hundred bucks off of it and like put it towards x-men one or something like that well <laughs> and with the ideas that you have man like with the idea that with the sending to the different grading services that's a great idea and um people like watching those videos about the uh cgc submissions and stuff people love those dude yeah um, i think like people love you're doing you're, you're doing stuff that people want to watch trying i mean I think people always appreciate something that brings some value to them. You know, you could do that through entertainment, but us, like knowledge is always going to be the, the thing that I will keep people watching a video. Right. Like, yeah. Um, the thing is like, I'm no, I'm no super expert. Right. So like, I can't go on over and over giving like knowledge. I'd have to put in a lot of work and research to just like constantly be bringing super informative video content um so i try to do it when i can um mm. but the rest of the time you know it's just it's just showing what i'm collecting talking to talking about comics live streaming things like that but but i try to come up with the odd video here and there where i could help out with some knowledge or just you know just be a little bit informative in some capacity so yeah awesome so you can kind of expect a mixed bag on your channel uh, a little yeah. bit of everything or, or what can people expect? Yeah. So, um, sh obviously show a lot of what I'm collecting, uh, Thank you, Mark. Showing books and stuff, you. talking about that. I do some live streaming. Um, uh, I have a kind of a X-Men club stream called the council of X that I started earlier this what, year. What's um, that about? Yeah. So when I, when I started my channel, I actually started a kind of a sporadic show that I host with my buddy Dan's uh, X Men comics from he's on IG, mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're both big X Men fans. He was like the first true friend I made on Instagram when I got into the hobby, and okay. so I thought he would be a great co-host to just talk to X Men collectors. So we started X Men Collector Chat on my channel. Cool. And then, um, I don't know. A few months back, we had a really great episode uh, with some with some friends. We had Mike from Lunch Money Comics and um, Josh from Sasquatch Comics on IG, awesome. and we had awesome. such a fun time that we 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 were talking afterwards about like we should just like get together on on a streamyard or whatever and just like geek out on 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 uh, X Men. So that kind of turned into this 
let's kind of create like an X-Men club uh, show where we just get together every uh, every couple weeks and uh, geek out on X-Men. So Pretty I started cool. that. And it's basically all you got to do is come on my on my X-Men collectors chat show mm -hmm. with Dan and then you're you get gain membership to the Council of X. <laughs> and then nice. you can come on anytime we we do a live stream so. And what was up with the draft thing? I saw something about a draft. How did that work? So we haven't had that. That's actually tonight at 9. Oh, <laughs> uh, tonight so at 9. I'm, stream awesome. I'm streaming tonight at 9. And it's just another uh it's just another Council of X episode, but we're going to do uh basically like a fantasy draft where we all draft um, our, our X-Men teams. It's going to be really fun. That is going to, dude, that sounds so like so much fun. I was thinking about that at work earlier today. I saw something that one of you guys put on Instagram about it. And uh, it, it got me thinking about doing like a draft for X-Men and how much fun that that would be, dude. That's, that would be so much fun. It's uh, uh yeah. So I'm going to do it with the uh, tier maker mm -hmm. um, where we'll, like each tier will just be one of our teams and we drag, we drag our picks into that. And then awesome. uh, when, when we get all our teams, I'm going to, I have this, uh, I found this website that does uh, ranking polls. So I'll ask everybody who's watching in the chat to uh, basically rank our teams and then we'll get like live results of who's got the best teams one to seven. That's so cool. it's, yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah, that will be fun. So I don't, I, you know, I don't, I don't want to like over promote cause I know it's the Monday night lineup and I, my my boy 22 i i love him he's got top 10 alternatives but uh if it's some point, away, man. if you want to come over to, to the colossus collector channel uh we're going to be doing that tonight on uh so, council X. colossus collector tonight at 9 p.m 9 p.m eastern time yep 9 p.m eastern time uh, i guess that'd be like what five pacific six, uh, six pacific yep six pacific um Y'all come hang out. Go hang out on Colossus Collector. Cause that sounds like a lot of fun. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's gonna be good. I think I think you know if this goes well, we we might do a, a another one of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants <laughs> in the future. Somebody uh, in yeah. our in our group had that idea, so it's like that'll be that'll be really fun to do as well. That would be a lot of fun, and and obviously Colossus Collector. It's that pretty much explains itself. It's is it is Colossus your very favorite character or one of your favorite characters? Absolute favorite character. Absolute favorite. Yeah. Um, and like I said, it, it started it started from that video game, and then uh, I just always like gravitated towards that character anytime I saw him, and you know whatever it was. And then uh, as I got closer to collecting comics. I started mm -hmm. thinking like, well, what am I going to call myself? Um, what do I want to collect? And I started thinking about Colossus and yeah, just, uh, I was like, yeah, I think I want to collect a lot of Colossus stuff. And then, and, and, and what I also liked about it was there's not like anybody else that I know of uh, in the community doing that or really like really owning that. So it felt like something fresh and original as well. It's true. Yeah, that is true. Cause uh, Although, I associate, colossus with you when i hear you know like i don't know but yeah yeah that makes sense makes perfect sense well i i i have met a few people who are big like colossus is their fa uh favorite as well but yeah. uh they don't necessarily like use it quite as much as i do so it's still right. i still feel like i i own it a little bit it sounds good too colossus collector it's it sounds yeah. good and then i use uh his sound effect from the video game in my uh, opening that uh yes. oh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that's yeah. awesome that's so cool well what do you think about colossus um portrayed in uh the movies like in in deadpool what do you think about colossus and deadpool yeah uh, we were kind of talking about prior to the to jumping on here i i've always felt that colossus is like highly um disrespected <laughs> by the creators like i just don't yeah. think he's ever been given the due that he he deserves or like the spotlight he deserves but yeah. um yeah same in the mm -hmm. movies like i felt like i think part part of it might have also been because of cg limitations when those first x-men movies came out but 
Like it was so cool in X2 when the guy busts through the door and like he armors up. Even though I don't love that that iteration of Colossus, it still was like really really cool. Uh, but oh, then when cool. he got into Dead, when he became like a main character of Deadpool and then Deadpool two, uh, that was that was really awesome for me. Like uh, getting to see that live action, it felt like Colossus. He's massive. He's strong. Uh, they did a really good job with the, with the, with the Deadpool movies. It was yeah, it was fun. It was it was cool getting to see him on screen in the Deadpool movies. Yeah. yeah, that was awesome. Let's see. I ask you what the what's your favorite uh, age to hunt for? Like, as far as do you go for your? Well, you already said that you're you're currently hunting Silver Age X Men right now, right? You said yeah. Earlier. I have like I I mean, it's funny. I was just having this discussion with with somebody recently about what what our favorite ages were. And I'm I'm definitely super torn between bronze and silver. Yeah. Because on one hand, bronze has the Claremont run, which I think is like my most favorite books and and stories. Um, but I do really just I love the the history and like the silver age is where all the where all it all started in Marvel. And like there's just something really awesome about like silver age books that uh i just love so i'm kind of like really torn between the two i i definitely though like those are my two favorite uh age of ages to collect in um even outside of x-men and stuff like i i do really love uh both silver and bronze you make a good argument for both silver and bronze i i i collect probably more bronze but i mm -hmm. i collect anything honestly man if it's but i i think i probably have the most bronze age stuff honestly but um, if you could put together a dream run, okay, if you could make your own comic book, your dream comic book about anything you wanted it to be about, it could be about your life, whatever, what what would be your, you have an unlimited budget, unlimited budget, you're rich. Uh, what? Who would you put as the creative team? Who would be the artist oh, and, wow. and the writer? <clears throat> um yeah that's tough i i would say claremont claremont's claremont. my favorite writer awesome. um Great and artist this is when i always kind of get a little bit torn like i i'd say my my three favorite artists are um dave cockrum john byrne and jim lee awesome awesome i think jim lee would be the the guy i'd go for um okay just because i mean I, I i said i like bronze and and and, and silver but i love jim lee's x-men like i love the way he drew them um yeah i i i would probably go and and i guess you know we're we're dealing with modern age so Getting yeah. Jim Lee and Claremont back together would be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a that's a pretty awesome team. Would it be a would it be a um oh and I mean Kirby and Starenko, I absolutely love both oh, of them yeah. too. Like I yeah, it's just it's hard. It's hard to pick artists, especially. Yeah, yeah. Can't go wrong with those choices as no. well. Uh let's see. I seem like I had another one too. Okay, yeah, I do have another. What's a book that you grab, no matter how many copies you have, every single time you see it in a bin, you have to grab it. What is, I, you have any of those books? Yeah, I wish I wish I had them handy. I had them out. I just put them all away. Um, X Men. And how many copies? How many copies do you own of that book? Yeah, uh, Uncanny <laughs> X Men. Uncanny X Men two twenty one. First, uh, Mister Sinister. Okay, cool. And cool. I have like 10 copies. Holy shit. That's crazy. You got yeah. me beat. You got me beat. I think I'm, I, uh, I have five five uh, lethal protectors and uh, eight spawn nines. Nice. <laughs> You're right there. You're right there. You're almost there with the spawns. Almost. Um I uh yeah, I'm 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 I really want to get a, a nine eight of two twenty one. But I also like so I'm not a spec guy at all. Like I, I kind of think Marvel specs somewhat dead. Okay. Like movie spec. Um yeah. 
But with one <laughs> caveat that I do think 221, when Sinister eventually comes to uh to the movies, is gonna is gonna pop off. So I'm I'm well I'm well uh established to uh make some make some dough <laughs> when that yeah. happens. Do you, do you think we're gonna see Sinister? Yeah, I think he's gonna be the villain. Um, whenever they make a new team, like mm-hmm. they actually like because right now they're they're kind of doing the multiverse thing. I think they're gonna bring back a lot of the former uh Fox X Men. Whenever Marvel makes like the a brand new fresh X Men story, yeah. I think Sinister is gonna be the big bad. Awesome, man. Well, I yeah. think that'd be really cool. I hope it happens for sure. Uh, I think it is. I think it's gonna happen, dude. That that's gonna be cool. Uh, what what's some other stuff that you you're gonna be live at nine o'clock mm-hmm. and with the the Council of Eggs? What's some other stuff you got coming up? You got the 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 video you were talking about with the grading. Um, you got anything else coming up you want to talk about? Yeah, I got uh, I got two two more things. So yeah, tonight we're doing the draft, the X Men draft. Mm-hmm. Um, next Sunday, yeah, I'm doing my my first ever claim sale uh i'm doing a big team up claim sale with some of my my community friends on my Very channel cool. uh yeah so it's sunday at um eight eastern five pacific and okay. it's going to be myself uh dan's x-men comics bruce from up north comics ryan from collecting casually and travis from comics limited Nice. Uh, and we're all gonna do. We're doing a big claim sale. First time I've ever done it. It's gonna be uh, fun. Uh, and yes, yeah, so if anybody huge, wants man. some you good and- deals, giveaways, we'll we'll be we'll be the place to be. <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna tune in for that. That sounds good. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. You and four other guys. Four other guys. You said. Yeah, we 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 had a six, but uh, unfortunately can't can't make it now. So, but yeah, we're gonna. There'll be plenty of books. Awesome. We got Mike Spider Slayer popping in. What's up, Spider Slayer? Thanks for coming out, man. I hope you're doing well this evening. Hope you got to see the eclipse where you were at and you're having a good night. Awesome. Spider Slayer in the building. Um, well, what can what can people expect from you um in the future? What can people expect from Colossus Collector coming up in 2024? Uh, you know, just um more more content. Um Definitely some, you know, count the Council of X. Uh, we do shows either generally on a Monday or a Friday night, always uh, 9 Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Um, and it's generally within uh, every two weeks. Uh, yeah. We might we might have a little bit of a, a break here in April because my birthday is coming up and I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit it in. But uh, yeah. Yeah, but we're going tonight, and then we'll, we'll. I'm sure we'll be we'll be back uh, soon, and then um, yeah, and then just more videos, um, either what I'm collecting or any other kind of thing I can think of. I like to do um, I like to do the odd top ten, just sort of top ten Silver Age in my in my collection or top ten uh, X Men books, whatever it is. Um, so Those are always fun. Yeah, always fun to do that. And uh, yeah, just uh, that that's same kind of content that I've been doing um, through this year. Cool, yeah, man. I'm going to Terrificon cool. in the summertime. So the Terrificon, uh, where's that? Right. Where, where's Terrificon at? What's up, Legion? It, it's in Connecticut. Connecticut, awesome. Yeah. When is that? Uh, it's August sometime. I don't remember the dates. So I think it's like around the 16th, 17th, something like that. Cool. Very cool, man. Well, um, I am a very sentimental person. Um, I don't know. I've just always been that way. And I have my comics that I'm just really attached to, not necessarily because of the value, um, just because of uh, just weird reasons for, for, for all different kind of reasons. I'm attached to different books. Um, but what are some books that you have in your collection that, that you're really sentimental towards? that are just your favorite books not necessarily because of value but just you know for sentimental yeah. reasons yeah i uh pulled some books so i showed you this one this is my first ever comic yeah um i also 
I also right around like I get I don't know I don't remember how I got these, but so this was the first one. This is this this is number two in that series, and number then I also have three, and I'm missing yes. four. Oh, cool. And then when I started collecting a, in the last couple of years, I got five. So I gotta get I gotta get three, and then I'll have this whole um mini series. Uh, but that's pretty sentimental because it it's sort of the the first comic I got in the, the set that came right after it. Um, and, I, and then I had mentioned, I had mentioned, um, when I, uh, when I got a little bit older, uh, just before, you know, a couple years before high school, I kind of got into comic books for a little bit, um, yeah. at that time. And, uh, I was just buying comics off, uh, the rack at seven 11. So this is actually the first comic book I ever bought myself. And Venom it's on trial. Number two of a three issue series called Venom on Trial. That's cool. So, so I got this was the first one I bought, and then I bought this one the following month, the third issue. But I missed the first issue. I never had it back then. You know, like how do you get an issue you missed? Like I, I didn't have an LCS or anything that I went to, so I just missed yeah. it. So when I got back. In the collecting, I picked it up and yes. completed this twenty-year gap of uh, <laughs> having the the full the full set. Yes, that's cool, man. That's awesome. So that's kind of sentimental to me. Um, this, so I said this was the first one I ever bought, but this was also mm -hmm. part of that purchase. This is Hulk uh, four hundred and fifty-two. Kind of got into Hulk the sun. That's an awesome this, cover. Yeah, this is part of the Peter David run, I believe. I love Peter David. Yeah. Legend. Absolute legend. But uh I yeah, I read like I read the this to death. I remember like drawing like copying art out of this too. Like I think we all that. did that. Like oh, I think yeah. that's something that like so many of us did when we were kids, like tracing over the artwork on these comic books. I ruined so many good books that way. Yeah, I was uh, I, I was pretty good at copying what I could see, so I would always just like have it open and then just like try to copy it. And um, yeah, so those are those the, those are kind of some pretty sentimental books. Awesome, those um, are some really cool books. I like those. You, you chose the you chose the perfect background uh, because this book is my other than. A book I'm about to show. This is uh, my yes. favorite X Men book. It's just a great cover, man. It's, oh, it's, it's hard so to good. beat cover art, but it's, it's also beautiful. just you know, it's my guy right there, right? Yeah, so, of course. We had to do the absolute, Colossal. Background. Absolutely love that book. That means a lot to me. I want to get that in a nine eight at some point. Man, um, that'd be awesome. <laughs> that'd be amazing. What's up, Izzy? So then I got two slabs. This first slab is actually just this is the first slab I ever bought since when I yes. started collecting. So that's my yes. first slab I, I ever got. Um that is a beautiful, it, amazing book. Still a book that I don't have any collection yet, but I'm gonna get that one one day. Yeah, this is a great X-Men key. I'm it's great, it's great cover, but also it's a triple header, right? It's first Emma Frost, first mm -hmm. Kitty Pride, and first Sebastian Shaw. Yep. Killer, killer uh, X Men key. Yep. So that's my that's first one. slab I ever bought. I probably that's will never sell that. Great first slab. Great first slab, man. And then this is my grail. This is my holy grail. Even beyond X Men 1, this is my favorite book of all time. It's the first appearance of my guy. Yes. And uh, I bought this last summer, and it was man. a very awesome experience. Good for you, man. That is an amazing book. That's a beautiful book you have in your hands. So that's my favorite book in my entire collection. That's so cool, dude. Yeah. What an amazing book, man. You said you picked it up last year? Yeah. Yeah. How did you feel when you finally had that in your hands? Holy shit. I mean, just awesome. I, I, I kind of <laughs> almost felt like this is too soon to have this. Like I should struggle for this a little bit longer, a little <laughs> more. But um, 
I just I wanted it and I love it. It's I, I absolutely love it. <laughs> I'm glad you have it, man. That's yeah. awesome. And I, I'm glad you came to hang out with us tonight, man. I've had a good time talking to you this evening. I really appreciate you, dude. Yeah, I really appreciate you having me on. It's been great, great chatting. And we got, let's see, we got about five minutes left. If if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, we'll try to get your questions answered. And um, like I was saying before, he's got the live stream coming up tonight at 9 p.m. Um, it's going to be a good time. Going to be talking X Men, mutant stuff. It's going to be a real fun time. So, y'all should check it out. That's going to be at Colossus Collector at 9 p.m. And uh, Mike Spider Slayer saying, My first slab ever was a crappy Miss Marvel issue four. I think I paid 20 bucks for it. Yeah. Um, my first one wasn't that great either, man. Um, actually, I'll show you my first one. It's decent, but the problem is, I bought my first slab in the year 2022 when. Everything was, was way more expensive. <laughs> yeah, that I probably and see, I probably overpaid for this as well. Yeah, of overpaying, but this was my first slab that Gleason Webb had. It's awesome, so, and it's man, a nine eight. It's, it's a nine cool. eight, man. You got you it, got a nine eight. Your first slab was a nine eight. Not bad. But I mean, like, I would rather have your 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 seven zero X Men any day, any day. <laughs> well, I paid up for it, so. <laughs> yeah i did too i did too i think yeah everybody was paying bad prices a couple of years ago um mon wants to know where did you find your arcade system I tell you right now i got it from wayfair because they got just what you need just what you need was that a are you sponsored was that a sponsor no, no that's kidding. just their tagline <laughs> i know uh <laughs> what's your second favorite character behind colossus that's what a uh, biggie shack wants to know good question so my second favorite character is uh is Wolverine, X Men Canadian, awesome. you know. Um, it makes sense. And, and then my third favorite character is Venom, because of I those love Venom. Venom on trial. And I always liked Venom, like I from the animated series. I always thought he was the coolest villain on that cartoon, and yeah. So I always just kind of grew up liking Venom. He is also <laughs> one of my favorite characters. I have a couple of Venom slabs. Um, Biggie. Did y'all first meet on club? Me and Ryan? I don't remember. I, I definitely remember seeing you on, on club, but I don't know if we were on the same time. Yeah, I don't think. I think me and Brandon were on at the same time. Yeah, I, I, I was on like the next week. Yeah. But yeah. But you you were on the first time I ever saw Biggie's uh, comic club. Ah, uh, Okay. Yeah, we all did at least now. Stuff is getting corrected and you can buy more. Yeah, yeah. Prices are are a little bit better now. What is your favorite X-Men villain? Rad wants to know. Rad Art and Comic. It's a good favorite. question because there are so many good ones. You um, said Sinister earlier. You got those 10 copies of that Sinister. I did say Sinister and I love Sinister. Oh, man. I, I really struggle with this question because I love Magneto. That's a good one. I yeah. love Juggernaut because Juggernaut's kind of like the nemesis to Colossus. Like they, they're always the ones that go toe to toe. Yeah. So I really yeah. like Juggernaut, and then I really like Sinister. So like I don't know. I, I I honestly don't know if I have a favorite favorite villain. Um, I think I've said before it's Magneto, but I waffle all the time on that question. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that I have a favorite either. How about a favorite female? Who's your favorite female X Men character? Storm. Um, Storm. Yeah, I, Storm. I is, that. Storm is my fourth favorite X Men. Uh, awesome. So Colossus, Wolverine, Nightcrawler, and I love Nightcrawler because uh, I, yeah. I, I'm 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 German background, so and he's German, so again connection just to me and then storm but i love storm like storm's awesome oh, great choice man great choice nightcrawler would be probably my favorite x-man out of out of all of them i doubt he probably he's probably my favorite mutant honestly just a big nightcrawler fan i always have been so cool i i yeah. i still to this day think um one of the best sequences of superhero um action in in a movie is X two when uh, Nightcrawler is zipping around the the White House 
in that uh, assassination yeah. attempt. Man, yes. that is just, like they nailed that. Yeah, they so absolutely did. Hard, like it was so good. Um, best X Men team leader, Storm. Storm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good choice. Yeah, Sentinel is my favorite villain. I love Sentinels. I absolutely see. I didn't even think of Sentinel. Sentinels, I don't really think of as like a specific. A they're singular they're like, villain. They're like um, yeah, they're they are a villain, but they're also not really a like they're they're uh. I don't know. I don't know how to classify them, but yes, I, I vil- Sentinels are awesome. Yeah. Yes, Let's Team see. Gold all the way, all Team the way. Gold. Let's let's like, I think Team Blue gets a lot of the 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 attention because they were in that Jim Lee run and yeah. Wolverines on them. But let's be clear, Gold Team would destroy Blue Team, like. <laughs> Hands down, they got they got Jean Grey, the the best telepath, and telekinetic. They got yep. Storm, she's an Omega yep. level mutant. They mm-hmm. got Iceman, got he's an Omega level mutant. They got Colossus. Yep. No one's taking on Colossus. It's over, and it, it's, it's over. over. And then you also got Archangel and Bishop. It's like yeah, Throw get out of here. In there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. That's I agree. It's hard. To, it's hard to uh, hard to argue against that. <laughs> but dude, man, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us this week, dude. It's been so much fun. Uh, I've enjoyed talking, especially the random questions and stuff, man. It's good to know this random stuff about uh, different members of the community and getting to know each other. It's fun. I enjoy learning yeah. stuff about you guys. And um, I gotta have yeah, you on my channel. So anytime, I can learn more about you, man. Anytime, man. Anytime you want me to come over, just let me know and I'll mark it on the calendar. And uh, yeah, dude. But you guys, if you are not subscribed to Colossus Collector, please go over to his channel and hit that sub button. Really funny, dude. Um, He does a lot of it's kind of a mixed bag. He does some CGC submissions. He does some live streams, just all sorts of cool comic related stuff. And he's a really funny guy, too. So um go over and hit that sub button check out the channel he'll be going live at 9 p.m this evening um so it's gonna be a lot of fun y'all be sure to check that out and thank you to all you guys that came to hang out this evening i really appreciate you guys um the guy uh everybody that came out uh mike spider slayer uh dr von who biggie shack all of you man i really appreciate you guys and anybody that comes through to check the replay thank you guys as well um they got a big guest this week over on Between the Lines. It should be starting in a couple of minutes. Uh, they're going to have David Nakayama, and that's going to be over at Roscoe's channel, Geek Out with Roscoe. So be sure to go over there and support those guys. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. But we will wrap it up how we always do with a little Biggie Shack. And I'll see you guys. Let's see. Who do I got next week? Hold on. Let me see who I got next week. I'm drawing a blank. Let's see. I probably should have wrote that down. Oh, we got World at War Comics, Thomas Hulse. We got Kingsville 2 just came out. So we got Thomas Hulse, comic book creator. Uh, It's going to be a lot of fun. Kingsville is really good if you haven't checked it out. But we'll see you guys next week. And I will end it with, like we always do, with the little Biggie Shack. Later, guys. I'd say that one is a banger, man. Real certified banger, dude.